Okay, better. Hi everyone, welcome to the um, March event for Kubernetes. Um, we have uh, a, an interesting lineup tonight, which I hope everyone will enjoy. My name is Hunter. If you don't know who I am, uh, I'm one of the uh, CNCF ambassadors here. So um, we run this event, you know, once a month. A few familiar faces I've seen around, but. Uh, you know, welcome to all the people who haven't been here. Usually when we kick it off, um, we like to get a bit of a poll about who knows about Kubernetes. Who's actually using Kubernetes in their day-to-day -day work? Okay, more hands going up. It's nice to see this uh, thing growing. Who's, uh, who's completely unfamiliar with Kubernetes? Okay, two, that's good. Um, we usually like to run a Kubernetes 101 every now and then, so we might uh, try and organize something coming up in the future for people who are wanting to get familiar with it. But um, tonight we've got a really good uh, set of talks. Um, we're really quite fortunate to have Rimos here, who is one of the creators of Helm, uh, the package manager for, for Kubernetes. He also works at Mesosphere and is going to give a bit of a rundown about how Kubernetes integrates with Mesosphere and all the interesting stuff there. Um, so just a quick, um, well actually maybe I'll come back and talk about it later about the other things that have been coming up. So let's get into the interesting stuff first and uh, see you all later. Hi, my name is Rimas. I work a solution architect for Mesosphere was lucky to invent that helm as well with my ex-colleagues from DS. So, who's familiar with helm? Wow, that's a good place to start. So, let's explain what helm is. Okay. So, that's about me. I was running crazy Docker adoption in 2014. Wrote my pass in Bash. Why did you Kubernetes to mature? So, so you have Kubernetes, right? And you need the easy story to get your applications to run. So we have templates, services, manifests, all those with Kubernetes. Anyway, not easy to manage. Is that okay for you? So we're not easy to manage. So. Helm brings a nice story. It packs your manifest files, Kubernetes files as a package called a chart, which is easy to distribute between your team, upgrade them, do new releases, and so on. So as I said, chart described your software and dependencies in one thing, basically, like looking to using apt, yum, installing applications, basically the same thing you do for Kubernetes with the Helm charts. So I'm going to explain the Helm basics, and in my second talk, I will use a demo as well, how, using, how to install applications with the Helm, how to install Helm, and how to install applications as well with the Helm. So, so, what is Helm? So, so, you need to manage your complexity for applications. So, chart describes even most complex apps, though, which can be repeatable and serve as a single point of authority. And chart can have subcharts, so like you could see like WordPress and having subchart like MySQL, and you even one click you can install both. And you need to uh, an upgrade. You just can specify the tag. You need your Docker image to be upgraded. And that will change only that place. If your chart gets changed, that you can apply that change as well. But the rest stays intact, so Helm knows where upgrade goes to. So charts are easy to version, share, and you can host on a as public or private repositories. You can have them on GitHub, like code, 
or we recommend using Helm repositories, so which are packed versions of your Helm charts, which are versions. So every time you release a chart, you bump a version, and you want to always can go downgrade them. Things happen. Bad release, bad chart release. So we can always roll back as well. So easy updates. So as I mentioned, most of the times, what you do when, when upgrades Docker image tag. That's most used case. So we can use git hash for your or server, whatever you're up to. Every and Helm upgrade specify that git hash tag or somewhere you upgrade and underneath is still kubernetes running doing like kub control kind of ish how many talks to uh, api server you need to do your rollback use helm rollback command roll back to your previous version by default or you can specify the version very similar to kub, kub control so helm components so we have components like Helm client basically sits on your laptop or your, in your CI CD pipeline as a Helm client, which knows how to connect your API server, sorry, to Tiller. So the client is responsible for following things like local chart development, you develop a chart, you all prefer to do locally on a laptop, not pushing everything upstream your servers to GitHub and CI CD first because you have to test it. So and interactive with the Tiller. Tiller is the server side of uh, Helm which interacts with API. So Helm client connects to a Tiller and Tiller connects to a connects to a user's API Kubernetes API server. So uh, yeah we already went full quick so so basically the server is listening for a request from a helm client that's it does nothing else sits and sleeps till you ask to do a job very simple on resources and so on so we ran that down. so um, three big components of con basic con concept of a helm chart so Chart is a Helm package. So, for example, we have a Jenkins chart. It contains all resources, resource definitions necessary to run your application, tool, or service inside of Kubernetes cluster. So, Jenkins, yes. Oh, yeah. I don't go much too deep to Jenkins, but like I experienced like Homebrew, Formula, AppGet, or YAM. RPM file, basically exactly what the chart is. And you have repository. It's not a Git repository, it's a Helm chart repository where you host with your simple web server. Even GCS S3 bucket can be used as well, as well to host your chart repositories. And you use Helm client to pack your Helm charts and after you have to sync them to your Helm repository. That allows easy, very easy to share between your team, between your CI CD pipelines, between servers, between clusters. You might have development, staging, production cluster. Because first you may maybe try to have the same chart, the new chart in dev cluster. You can try that first. And so one place to share the Helm charts. It's a Helm repository. And all they packed as a small tar files. Every time you release, it gets a new version. So going there via Git, you don't have that option. So you always have to go back via pull requests and commits and so on. So the release of a chart. So Helm release is basically you install the chart. It's called a release. The release is stored, uh, stored as config maps, or if you need more security, you can store as secrets, in Kubernetes secrets. And you can install the, ch the same chart as many times as you want, but you have to provide the release name. Or 
or if you don't provide the name, the uh, random name will be picked up as well. But most cases, I think you prepare, prefer to have a release name so you know where to, which kind of release you have, or because random names just don't give you anything. So with all that in concept in mind, we now can explain how Helm is simple as this. So Helm installs charts into Kubernetes, creating a new release for each installation, and releases are stored as Taylor config maps or secrets. Depends on, by default it's config maps, but if you need more sec security, use secrets. It's easy, easy change, changeable. So what is a Helm chart? Yeah, so it so allows you to share applications as Kubernetes shares in your organization, create reproducible build, builds of your Kubernetes applications, manage your Kubernetes manifest and other files, manage releases of Kubernetes packages. So, and chart has very simple structure, basically. So my chart is basically here, it's a chart name, and chart YAML just has information about your chart owners. And most cases, you, you have to specify in a chart the version. Every time you release a chart, update a chart, you have to bump a version there. So license is optional, but up to README. It's, oh sorry. README is recommended to have, so everybody knows how to install it, especially just in case. But not really needed. So values file, that's very interesting thing. So with values files, you specify which values you want to pass your templates. Like most cases, Docker image tag. So Docker values file has a Docker image tag. You specify by default. And afterwards, if every release, you can update it that. And you, you have two options as well. Use every time you can have a values file updated with a new char chart, so with a new tag, and maybe it's more recommended way, and maybe to store that in GitHub, or Git, 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 Git repo, like GitOps, so you always have a state of your cluster when you store that way. So charts. By default, you don't need that till you need the subcharts. Like, like for example, WordPress needs the MySQL. So you can store subchart there yourself, or you just have dependencies using some external chart of MySQL. But templates folder is your deployments, ingress, services, daemon sets where you store your templates. Notes, it's optional, it's nice to have, it's more for humans, so when you install a chart, it spits up some information, how to use a chart. If you have fully automated CI CD pipeline, it's not really needed, but sometimes developers, ops guys still need to che check the things, so it's nice to have it, and it may be recommended. So, some, if you're looking for some sample chart, sample charts, so that's a good good thing to start from, like hubcubeapps.com. So it's basically the same thing like here, but you get the dashboard and UI. Basically, you can click it here front and so you can see in visual way all the charts. Okay, maybe JFrog. Basically, there is the readme file, presents in a nice way, and how to install. And you can run the, that's based on monocular, so you can run yourself in your internal cluster, the cube apps as well. And you can install as a Helm chart, so very handy for, de for local developers if you want them to go that way. But I only recommend developers to learn a lot of Helm stuff 
because they should code and nothing else. Do be doing nothing else because way too much complexity. But Helm takes a bit away from complexity from Kubernetes, especially if ops guys prepare Helm charts for you, for developers, so you get instructions like these. Very easy to go start from. So if you go here, so it's exactly the same chart we saw before, but now it's in GitHub. So we have to pick anything, traffic, for example, and you see the README file as well, which with cube apps, how it gets translated in more human readable way. So Helm is really easy to use. So first you need to have Kubernetes cluster, of course. Kube, con Kube control has to talk to your Kubernetes cluster. You do Helm in it, which initializes your local home repository, the local directory for Helm, and knows how to connect to Kubernetes cluster. Next, you have to add Helm repository. In this case, we're using Helm repository as incubator because we have incubator and stable for Helm charts, uh, upstream Helm charts. So you add uh, your Helm repository. So that's easy scriptable for your CI CD pipelines. Basically, you can do Helm init dash dash client. Afterwards, you add your private public. Helm repository all right here. This is about one command. And you do Helm repository update. So that fetches all the charts. So I'll go and demo all that in my next talk. And we have all Kubernetes and Helm part. So that's basically easy. So, so install a chart. Yeah, you do Helm install stable Redis. Yeah, because I'm telling name Redis. Release name will be Redis. So I tell you namespace, specifying namespace Redis as well. So I want to disable persistence. Basically, that has to be, of course, in your values file. And uh, specifying the Docker image as well. That installs, also, installs a Helm chart. And afterwards, you can list the Helm List, list all your releases. Upgrading as well. It's so easy as, as that. So Helm upgrade Redis. Basically your release name, stable. Reuse values is a really cool feature. So if you don't use reuse values, you can get overwritten by default from your values file. Have, change, have made more changes. So in this case, we specify just the Docker image wanna see changing the version, or you can have a dash f and values override file, and that values file have only one thing, not a big values file. Maybe I can show you values file as well. Let's maybe go back a couple of charts. Yeah, maybe easy to explain more values file. So values will have a replica count, how many replicas you need, image, so repository, tag, pull policy, and the app related agent token, whatever it needs to be done, private sheet. And resources, it's a common thing as well. You pass resources to your application, specify that. So having your values file, you can uncomment all those things, so you don't have to pass it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Good. So you can have a copy of your that values file, uncomment, change things you need, and store that values file maybe with your app code only. So chart is separate. 
you can repository, you should have a separate repo of Git repository for Helm charts and and values file with your app, so app and you can just overwrite. No selected specify you just basically normal Kubernetes. So if you wanna put on the particular nodes it has some selector your application. So chart you can look at quickly as well. So it has API version, description, name. This is basically you have to change all the time you do the chart upgrade. Change, sorry, so so you have a versions properly, your application version and icon just what's about. So it's nice to have with keyboard, keywords as well. So when you search in your Helm repository, you can search by this. It will be easier to find a source and who maintain our oh, my chart. Then, so. so templates, so like for example nodes, you specify what, okay, like build kite agent token wasn't specified, you get an error. But and nothing will be installed. And the instructions what to do. So it's it's nice to have it. Deployment as well. Checks for agent token. There is no agent token. Deployment won't be installed. So and like image, you see values image repository, values image tag. So before Helm, you, you, you used to be setting. You said, or maybe bash script, which has a template file inside. You replace it. Who thinks now with the values file and Helm, we can easily replace. So we don't have to touch that template files directly. Releasing, yeah. Yeah. Test. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to like as you were talking about uh, what you could do without Helm. Like at the way we started at Honestbee was we we used Kubernetes manifest. Um, we just first use uh, Jinja Python templates, and then you you write some. I first we use set, then we use Python templates, then we put a, a Flask. Uh, server that basically renders the template, so we have a webhook to deploy. And at that point, we just basically said we're building Helm, so why don't we just use Helm? Yeah. Um, so basically, that's yeah what I wanted to highlight. Yeah, that takes all complexity away, so we don't have to build your stuff; just use it. And it's really big community behind it, so big companies supporting that. So why not? Because I went to Helm Summit a couple of weeks ago. We heard so many different interesting use story, stories, so usage stories, so all videos available, so you should check it out. And even Helm V3 will bring loads of new features, which community wants. So it's a normal template file from Kubernetes, but you have with Go templates, so it's get replaced in place one values file by Helm, so we don't have to do anything yourself. Yeah, so we have secrets, the same way. Service account is needed. And you see every, it has spe special labels, so the app label basically gets a name from the release, chart, chart version, and this is why it's good to have a chart vers version. So every time you release a new chart version, you do it gets a new release. So it's, that will be stored here as a label. Every release has name as well, so it will be stored here as well. So we always go back and check and upgrades work really nicely with that. So. All the labels. Um, yeah. I'd honestly be also because the chart becomes like a standard way of deploying the application. Every 
chart can be linted, can be you can enforce which labels are you know mandatory before your developers can or before your team deploys any application. If you use Kubernetes monitoring, automatically all those labels are available for you to chart to make uh, very detailed graphics. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that that all of this is built in in, in Helm and allows your team to to provide very deep uh, inspection of how much CPU each individual container is using uh, on your Kubernetes cluster. If you want that information. So the cube metrics automatically x these things and we were using Datadog so in our case um, our the way that the Datadog integration scrapes the metrics from the Kubernetes cluster every single metric is tagged by the uh, labels attached to the to the containers I didn't have to do anything I just define them make them default yeah plus you you are free to add your labels it's not a problem at all basically when you use a good example maybe using like traffic or engine ingress. So you have to have use, lab use labels in your deployments, you have to, sorry, in your ingresses. So the ingress gets picked up by particular uh, traffic or um, engine ingress. There are more now with guys. So. See, now it's totally different. So we have service type, load balancer, load, load balancer IP, debug, node selector, affinity, tolerations, SSL. So you put your values for what your, need, your app needs, but sometimes you see it gets very complex. So imagine having that all without Helm. It will be unmanageable totally. So much basically building where our flask will be won't be easy. Oh, that's big improvement on traffic now. <laughs> yeah, so that's a good example basically of value as well. It's crazy, but you can have a default, and you have a second values file which you specify with F as well as overwrite, and you just can put. You pick anything you need. It's, it's, most of it changeable, and you have basically okay. The best example where is a tag or whatever. You, okay, we can tell load balancer type in your values file, and you can specify two values file default one and the new one as well. So, there, the last one overwrite the, the default one, so it's basically very flexible. So what? Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions? Um, shall I go back something or explain something more? Um, now it's a real question. <laughs> um, so in the values, as you saw, there's a couple of them show like a private key, um, some like. Yeah, some, some secrets basically, right? So how can we split the secrets from the values from um, a Helm release, for example? I usually have secrets separately, totally. I even use secret for secrets to use Helm charts, but I have separate. I don't mix any more secrets. So in this case, you don't really have to worry about secrets. Especially developers doing changes, releasing something, even if it's not a production, but having secrets separately, it makes more sense. So separate Helm chart, which could be particular CI, CD pipeline, which deploys that, and so kind of ish. And mm, lots of cases, secrets are shared between your apps. So having a separate secret makes more sense. And if app has what are five different microservices, you usually prefer to put into the same namespace. So Deploying the secret in the same namespace from a separate Helm chart makes total sense. 
Yeah, at, at, um, at Onesby, we actually also um, don't put any secrets inside the value files. We use something called Vault Controller to fetch the secrets and yep. create the secrets completely separate from the uh, release. Yeah, um, yep, totally. And because it's the, the value really defines what is deployed in your cluster. So you have to be able to commit it and do infrastructure as code over it. So you need to be able to collaborate on it and iterate over it and control the changes to the values files. They are a very important part of, of how your clusters are being deployed. So you really need to source control them. And yeah, totally. Especially when you saw the traffic values file, that's a really complex one. And you have a secrets mixed together, it's not so easy to manage. Anything else? Or? Shall we have a short break or shall I continue to my next topic with demos and everything? Five minutes, okay.